God's providence works today in our lives, but God's ultimate act of providence was something that He did 2,000 years ago. That as Hebrews 6, 9 says, this hope is what we have as an anchor for the soul, a hope both sure and steadfast. And that is none other than God's ultimate act of providence upon the cross of Jesus Christ. That 2,000 years ago, God provided His ultimate plan of salvation that all of us who are imperfect and sinners who deserve punishment, He has provided a way for us to be saved. And this is God's plan that He sent His only beloved Son to this earth so that He could live a life that we were supposed to live and that He would die the death that we were supposed to die. That Jesus Christ on that cross would be crucified and that He would be the sacrifice, the substitute for us. And that God's promise would be for anyone who trusts upon the finished work of Christ on that cross. It is they who have eternal life. It is they who have forgiveness of sins. It is they who can enter into God's presence. It is they who have God's power. You see, the ultimate act of God's providence was in and through the cross of Jesus Christ and Jesus Christ alone. In fact, there is a hymn writer, and I will end with this. He says this, Now I have found the ground wherein sure my soul's anchor may remain. The wounds of Jesus for my sin before the world's foundation slain, whose mercy shall unshaken stay when earth and sky are fled away. Fixed on the ground will I remain. Though my heart fail and flesh decay, this anchor shall my soul sustain. When the earth's foundations melt away, mercy's full power I then shall prove. Love with an everlasting love. This is of God's providence that God's providence carries us through. And God today is calling you to Himself. Today, as I close, there are only two people in this room. Only two people. The first group of people are those who are still weathering through the storm by themselves. They're self-sufficient. They're thinking they can do this on their own. They're believing the lies that they can take it into their own hands, that they can escape. But the second group of people, they believe in God, God's plan, God's promise, God's presence, God's power, and that they believe the truth. They hold it upon an anchor in their lives. The first group of people, they're still working their way as if the storms are God's punishment. But the second group of people, they believe by faith that God has allowed these storms to happen to them for a specific reason, for a purpose. The first group of people, they're still trying to earn merit from God. The second group of people, they know it is by grace and grace alone, something that we do not deserve. The first group of people, they are lost. They're carried away by the seas and the waves. The second group of people, they are saved. They are within God's hand and embrace. The first group of people, they quit. At the first onset of hardship, they're gone. The second group of people, they have courage because they know that God is in control. The first group of people, they're still living in the flesh, but the second group are brought about by the Spirit of God. What is the difference between these two people? The first group, they reject God and His invitation. The second group, they receive God. They believe in God's providence. They entrust their lives upon God. They are anchored in the hope that God has provided. What is the difference between these two people? My dear brothers and sisters, 
it's none other than the cross of Jesus Christ. The cross is our anchor in any storm. That even today, as you face difficulties, discouragements, you're on the verge of giving up, that God has you, that He is holding you, that ultimately, through the cross of Jesus, we are anchored in His salvation, in His forgiveness, and that is more than enough for us. In any storm, we can say, it is well, it is well with my soul. Why don't we bow our heads and close our eyes as we close this service. Father God, today we stand before you and we thank you, like Paul, in the midst of the storm. We thank you, Lord, that in the storm, we see your plan unfolding. We realize that you're present with us that we can depend upon your promises and that your power is always available for us. So Lord, we thank you that we can be courageous, that you are in control. And today, Lord, I want to pray for all of my friends here, whoever has come here and maybe today you realize, hey, who is this Jesus? Maybe today you have not surrendered your life to him. Maybe today you have not fully given him the anchor to your soul, then I pray that today you will not harden your heart, but that instead you will listen to him. That as he is drawing you near to him, you will embrace him, that you will receive him, and that you will find him as the anchor. So if today that is you, my dear friend, if today God is calling upon you to trust in him, to turn away from your former way of life, to turn away from self-dependence, to turn away from your sin, to turn away from whatever you are depending on in the storm, that today you want to trust in Him and in Him alone, I encourage you, why don't you raise your hand? Anyone here today, that today is the day that you make Jesus the anchor for your soul in the midst of the storm. Any ra raise your hand, please. With all heads bowed down and every eye closed, Raise your hand. Praise God. There are many in this room today that they're realizing their need of a Savior in the midst of the storm. In fact, if you're raising your hand right now, I want you to stand up. Stand up as we pray for you, as we want to invite you into this vital relationship with Jesus, that He is the anchor for our soul. Praise God. There are many standing up. Praise God. And we will pray with you and for you. If you are seated and you want to pray for those around you, why don't you extend your hands over them and let us pray together over them. Father God, you see everyone standing here. More importantly, Lord, you see their hearts. You see how troubled they are. You see how difficult their situation is. And I pray, Lord, that in the midst of the storm today, they will find that you are mighty that you are in control, that you are Lord over all. And today, Lord, we surrender our lives to you, that you are our Lord and our Savior, that you are the one who died for us on that cross. And on the third day, O oh Lord, you rose again to signify that now we trust in you, we have forgiveness of sins, we have eternal life, and we shall forever be with you at the end of the age. Oh Lord, thank you for those who have stood up. And today we pray for those who are in the midst of the storm, that they will realize that they can be strong, that they can be courageous in the midst of the storm because you, our God, are in control. We pray all of these things to the anchor of our souls, the author and perfecter of our faith, Jesus Christ, our mighty Savior and our Lord, the Lord of lords and the King of kings, who forever reigns in all the heavenlies and upon our lives. He is Lord of all. And it is in His powerful and beautiful name that we pray all of these things. And everyone said, Amen and Amen. Why don't we give God all that He deserves? Praise Him, praise Him today. God bless you.